Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Target for IQ. This is Shikha Singh and in today's video, I am going to discuss a few MCQs on the subject Court Fees Act 1870 and these questions are going to be really helpful for your upcoming judicial services examination. So let's begin. The first question is the Court Fees Act was enacted on the options are A 11th March 1870, B 11th June 1870, C 11th April 1870 or D none of these. The correct answer is option A 11th March 1870. Next question, the object of formation or enactment of the Court Fees Act of 1870 is dash. The options are A, to put burden upon litigants, B, to collect revenue for a state, C, to create technicalities for litigants or D, none of these. The correct answer is option B, to collect revenue for a state. Next question, ascertainment of court fee is duty of the dash. The options are A, litigant, B, court, C, government, D, none of these. The correct answer is option B, court. Next question, the term ad valorem court fee used in the Court Fee Act 1870 denotes dash. The options are A, according to the valuation of the subject, B, value of subject matter to certain conditions, C, both of the above or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, according to the valuation of the subject. Next question, section 7 subsection 3 of the Court Fees Act 1870 deals with dash. The options are A, court fees for movable property having market value. B, court fees for movable property having no market value. C, both of the above or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, court fees for movable property having market value. Next question, in case where plaintiff paid insufficient court fees, the suit shall be stayed until the additional fee is dash. The options are A, paid, B, paid by the government, C, remit by the court or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, paid. Next question, the relevant provision of this act for refunding of fee on application for review of judgment is dash. The options are A, section 15, B, section 14, C, section 13A or D, none of these. The correct answer is option B, section 14. Next question, every question relating to valuation of court fee shall be determined by the options are A, the court, B, the court officer, C, the parties or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, the court. Next question. In criminal cases, no fees shall be charged for serving and executing processes on behalf of prosecution as provided in DASH. The options are A. Section 20B, B. Section 20A, C. Section 20 or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option B. Section 20A of the Act. Next question. Which documents from the following are exempted from court fee? The options are A. Letters of administration, B. Power of attorney, C. Both A and B or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option C. Both A and D. Next question. The section of the Court Fees Act 1870 dealing with the number of peons in district and subordinate court is dash. The options are A. Section 21B, B. Section 21A, C. Section 22 or D. None of these. The correct answer is option C. Section 22. Next question. Mode of levying court fees is provided in dash. The options are A. Chapter 5A, B. Chapter 5, C. Chapter 4 or D. None of these. The correct answer is option B. Chapter 5. Next question, Dash government makes rule for the sale of stamps. The options are A. Appropriate, B. Provincial, C. Federal or D. None of these. The correct answer is option A. Appropriate. Next question, Section 26 of the Act provides that Dash. The options are A. The stamps to be adhesive, B. The stamps to be impressed, C. Both A and B or D. None of these. The correct answer is option C. Both A and B. Next question, this act consists of dash schedule. The options are A, 2, B, 1, C, none of the above or D, both A and B. The correct answer is option C, none of the above. Next question, the Court Fees Act of 1970 was enforced on dash. The options are A, 11th March 1970, B, 1st March 1970, C, 1st April 1970 or D, none of the above. The correct answer is option C, 1st April 1970. Next question, the Court Fees Act of 1870 is dash. The options are A, Fiscal Statute, B, Corroborative Statute, C, Technical Statute or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, Fiscal Statute. Next question, the word vernacular language used in section 21 of the Act means dash. The options are A, Local Language, B, English Language, C, Roman Language or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, Local Language. Next question, section 33 deals with admission in dash cases of documents for which proper court fee has not been paid. The options are A, family cases, B, criminal cases, C, civil cases or D, none of these. The correct answer is option B, criminal cases. Next question, all fees referred to in section 3 or chargeable 
under the court fees act shall be collected by stamps as provided in dash the correct answer is option a section 26 next question section 20 of the act empowers dash to make rules as to cost of processes the options are a provincial government b high court c both of the above or d none of these the correct answer is option b high court next question refunding of court fee paid on memorandum of appeal is dealt by dash the options are a section 14 b section 13 c section 12 or d none of these the correct answer is option b section 13 Next question by court reverses or modifies its former decision on grounds of mistake it shall refund the fee as per dash the options are a section 14a b section 15 c both of the above or d none of these the correct answer is option b section 15 Next question as per section 7 clause 10 of this act court fees in suit for specific performance would be dash the options are a according to amount of consideration b upon discretion of court c according to desires of plaintiff or d none of these correct answer is option a according to amount of consideration next question in suits for maintenance and annuities or other sums payable periodically according to the value of the subject matter of the suit such value shall be deemed 10 times the amount to be payable dash the options are a for 1 year b for 3 years c for 2 years d none of these the correct answer is option a for 1 year next question for preemption suits the value of court fees would be the options are a 5 times of the revenue so payable b 10 times of the revenue so payable c both of the above or d none of these the correct answer is option b 10 times of the revenue so payable next question the court fees act 1870 contains dash the options are a no preamble b no schedule c both a and b or d none of these the correct answer is option c both a and b Next question as per section 29 of the act where any such document is amended in order merely to correct a mistake and to make it conform to the original intention of the parties dash the options are a depends upon court's discretion b it shall not be necessary to impose a fresh stamp c it shall be necessary to impose a fresh stamp or d none of these the correct answer is option b it shall not be necessary to impose a fresh stamp next question multifarious suits under section 17 of the act are concerned with dash the options are a two or more distinct subjects b three or more distinct subjects c both of the above or d none of the above the correct answer is option a two or more distinct subjects next question section 11 subsection 2 of the act deals with dash the options are a submission of less court fee b submission of extra court fee c refund of court fee when amount decreed is less than amount claimed or d none of these The correct answer is option C refund of court fee where amount decreed is less than amount claimed. Next question section dash of the court fee act 1870 deals with fees on documents filed in mufassil courts or in public offices. The options are A7, B6, C5 or D none of these. The correct answer is option B6. Next question section 3 of the act deals with dash the options are a levy of court fees in district judge court b levy of court fees in court of civil judge in their ordinary jurisdiction c levy of court fees in high court in their extraordinary jurisdiction or d none of the above the correct answer is option c levy of court fees in high court in their extraordinary jurisdiction Next question rules for supply number renewal and keeping accounts of stamps are provided in dash the options are a section 26 b section 27 c section 28 or d none of these the correct answer is option b section 27 next question section 35 of the act deals with the power of dash with remitting fee the options are a supreme court b high court c appropriate government or d none of these the correct answer is option c appropriate government next question the documents are specified under dash of the court fees act 1870 are exempted from payment of court fee the options are a section 19a b section 19 c section 18 or d none of these the correct answer is option b section 19 next question when court orders for additional fee to fulfill the insufficiency within a specific time and plaintiff fail to fulfill insufficiency the court shall dash the suit the options are a dismiss b dismissed the suit as provided in section 2 clause 2 c adjourn for next date or d none of these the correct answer is option b Next question the amount of fee payable under this act on a memorandum of appeal against an order relating to compensation under any act for the timing in force for the acquisition of land for public purposes shall be computed dash the options are a according to the amount claimed b according to the amount awarded c according to the difference between the amount awarded and the amount claimed by the appellant or d none of these the correct answer is option c according to the difference between the amount awarded and the amount claimed by the appellant 
Next question, the section dealing with computation of fee payable in a certain suit for money is dash. The options are A section 10, B section 7, C section 6 or D none of these. The correct answer is option B section 7. Next question, section 21 of the act provides that a table of process fee shall be exposed to view in the conspicuous part of dash. The options are A revenue record room, B tax officer office, C each court or D none of these. The correct answer is option C each court. Next question, the section dash of this act deals with court fees in suits to set aside an attachment. The options are A, 7 clause 9, B, 7 clause 8, C, 7 clause 7 or D, none of these. The correct answer is option B, 7 clause 8. Next question, section dash of this act deals with procedures where net profit or market value is wrongly estimated. The options are A, 10, B, 12, C, 11 or D, none of these. The correct answer is option A, 10. Next question, as per section 5 of the act, when any difference arises between the officer whose duty it is to see that any fee is paid under this act and any suitor or attorney as to the necessity of paying a fee or amount thereof, the question shall be solved by dash. The options are A. Taxing officer, B. Court officer himself, C. Both of the above or D. None of these. The correct answer is option A. Taxing officer. Next question, the present court fees act to replace the dash. The options are A. Act number 36 of 1860, B. Act number 26 of 1867, C. Act number 10 of 1862 or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option B. Act number 26 of 1867. Next question, under the Court Fees Act, who is empowered to declare who shall be the taxing officer? The options are A. Judge of High Court, B. Chief Justice of High Court or C. State Government or D. Governor. The correct answer is option B. Chief Justice of High Court. Next question, Section 7, Clause 5 of the Court Fees Act deals with dash. The options are A. Court Fees in Preemption Cases, B. Court Fees in Cases of Declaration, C. Court Fees in Cases for Possession of Land, Houses and Gardens or D. None of these. The correct answer is option C. Court Fees in Cases for Possession of Land, Houses and Gardens. Next question, the Court Fees Act of 1870 consists of dash sections. The options are A. 42, B. 36, C. 30 or D. None of these. The correct answer is option B. 36. Next question, court fee may be refunded under section 13 if suit is remanded in appeal under order dash of CPC. The options are A. Order 42, Rule 23, B. Order 40, Rule 33, C. Order 39, Rule 1, D. Order 41, Rule 23. The correct answer is option A. Order 42, Rule 23. Next question, preliminary point means dash decision of which avoids full hearing of the suit. The options are A. Any issue of law, B. Any issue of fact, C. Both A and B or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option B. Any issue of fact. Next question. The fee payable under the Court Fees Act 1870 shall be computed. The options are A. According to the amount claimed in money suits. B. On the full value of the plaintiff's share in the property in suits for partition. C. On the half value of the subject matter of the suit in maintenance suits or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option A. According to the amount claimed in money suits. And now the last question is. Among the following statements, the true statement is The options are A. If the application for review is partly or wholly due to new evidence being modified or reversed, the court shall authorize the application to recover the fee paid. B. Where the court on the application for review reverses its absolute decision on the ground of lapse of law of fact, shall authorize the refund of such fee by the amount exceeding the amount when the other application has been made. C. Both A and B or D. None of the above. The correct answer is option C, both A and B. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked it. Thank you so much.